All right, and hello everyone, and welcome to uh, Season 2, Session 2 of the Amalthia Group. Uh, today I don't really have much in the way of announcements, other than uh, depending on what calendar you believe. Uh, apparently it's International Tabletop Day, so yay for that. Uh, we're just going to go ahead and jump right into it. Uh, I believe today, uh, Gore-Tag, you have the opening log. Commander's log, stardate 63583.2. While the captain is away overseeing the initial archaeological survey of the obelisk world, I've been given command of the Amalthea, which really is nothing new since the captain had taken command of the Gamma Vanguard while the Admiral was out. The Amalthea is currently around a planet-sized machine that the Europa crash landed on. Engineering teams have been ordered to work around the clock to get the Europa back to its bay in the Amalthea for extensive repairs. Science teams have also been working tirelessly to research what this machine world is as well. I have planned to have Lieutenant Darval keep fighters and shuttlecraft patrolling around the machine world, especially the Europa crash site, for quick and easy recall of the repair and research teams if the need arises. Construction and testing of the Graviton catapult is still underway. I'm told the necessity of engineering and science personnel for the Europa repairs and research of the machine world should not hamper this construction or testing. Captain has given instructions to confirm no remaining caretaker presence in the system, as well as the charting of space between uh, Suathia and the caretaker homeworld. Um, considering charging Lieutenant Vinleth and her squad to handle that portion of the tasks. Until the captain returns, I've taken up residence in the big chair, though I try not to be in it as much as possible. End lock. All righty. And, uh, as usual, before I start throwing plot at you guys, I wanted to give you guys an opportunity to uh, have your own sort of scenes. So if anybody has any sort of scenes they'd like to get out of the way, this is your opportunity. So open Rizazo floor. Rizazo has one that probably needs to get done fairly quickly. All right, what is Rizazo doing and with whom? Finding Free Pack, of course. Okay. Uh, let's uh, let's do Free Pack is let's do that in half hanging out. Uh, okay, we're going to do yeah, I figure let's do engineering. We haven't been here in a while. And then uh, let's throw Rosazo down. All right, carry on. So for the obvious thing as he slides up, is, uh, Chief, I believe I, I need some repairs after the crash. Uh, I am meeting all sorts of uh, odd, odd looks and curious glances from people after, as I, I talk to them. And people I, keep asking if I need uh, some vine, some cheese, and a cigarette. I, I, I know not what one of those is. Uh, is it a cigarette some sort of a, a tool? Uh, I think it's another device that humans use to kill themselves. I'm not sure. You know how crazy they are. Yes, they are uh, the most perplexing species. Them and the, their interest in, uh, uh, what is it, uh, Muzak? I've, I've never quite understood that. Oh, music. Oh, you could. They've got some great music. Spice. I've never quite understood spice. Is it? Oh, oh I, could, is I know a guy. I, can, I know a guy that could uh, really help you out if you're looking to expand your horizons there. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's food that is not food. That it is very, very confusing to me. Right. Well, it seems like this thing is really. Uh, I just really did a patch job for you here. I could really, uh, I could, if I took some time, I could help you out. I could even give you a couple of different choices, a couple of modules to switch between. I think my usual is adequate. It is served me well in the past, and I've customized the, the, a lot of the, the dialogue. Just All right. I'll try not to mess it up too much, then. I was also thinking of throwing you together, uh, an infrared flashlight kind of deal. Yes, I think we, we talked about that a little bit after the, the, the incident in the frozen ship. Anything that would help me see in the non-traditional circumstances would be good. Uh, an right. attachment for the device adequate. All right, I'd like to not jury-rig his thing this time and uh, maybe do an extended task to develop that infrared flashlight 
Raphael, if you if you don't want to do an extended task, um, what are the I, I, I think an infrared flashlight is probably something fairly innocuous or easy to make. Uh, but right. this is a good momentum generator. So why don't we have you do a control and an engineering uh, difficulty of zero? And hopefully this will give you guys some momentum to look at that. Gives you two momentum to start off with, and yeah. Uh, you are able to restore Rosazzo's uh, voice modulator to its normal setting, quote unquote. And uh, you're also able to attach to his uh, little robot arm that, you know, he kind of used to manipulate things. Uh, you are able to install what is basically a uh, infrared flashlight so that he may see in the dark. How do I sound now? Well, you sound like you. I don't think it's much of an improvement. It's very, uh... Computer meets Vulcan, if you get what I mean. I personally enjoyed a little life to it, but if this is what you want... It is It is customary. I, I feel comfortable with this and the response. I do not wish to cause people any discomfort. I'd like to be identified and recognized. Oh, you are not hard to recognize, believe me. Yes, I, I probably, that is probably true. But it is useful to be identified on the comms instantly. Especially during times of crisis. People know not to question. I get you, I get you. If you ever want any kind of modu modules or any kind of uh, enhancements done to it, if I'm not busy, I'll do Thank you very much for your time, Chief Prefect. You're welcome. Don't uh, leave anything on the floor when you get like I, I don't know how that works with you. I try not to leave anything behind. It's rude. All right. I kind of like that uh, that connection to the voice. It it reminds me of uh, Stephen Hawking. How like he refused to upgrade because uh, his voice was unique. So I think that's a nice touch. All right. Uh, any other scenes people want to get out of the way? I have a quick one with Gorteg. Sure. Either in Captain's quarters or in the on the bridge. Either or. Well, let's go to the bridge. So yeah, Gorteg, you're sitting in the big chair, Darval. Uh, you're uh, sitting at your station. Uh, Rosazzo will say that this has happened after, you know, 30 minutes, so you could be on the bridge if you so wished. Just going to slide in. The transition. Uh, Darval picks up a pad, uh, spins around in his chair, and passes it to Commander Gorteg. Commander, I wish permission to regain my flight privileges on the Valkyrie fighter. Uh, you will see here the uh, training ta the the holodeck training simulated uh, scores. I'm still quite proficient. Gortek will take the pad, look at it, hit a couple buttons, hand it back. There you go. You're recertified. Thank you, sir. Permission to join the next patrol wing. Uh, granted. At least one of us can get out of here and back in a cockpit. I look forward to the sensation again, sir. I shall slot myself in for Patrol Gamma 6. Uh, flight time leaves at 0600 hours. Uh, very good, Lieutenant. Also make sure that your replacement from Beta Shift um, is up here to cover while you were gone. Uh, yes, sir. I shall... I shall ensure... I shall brief uh, uh, Ensign... I shall brief Ensign Horatio on the updated flight patterns for the day. Excellent. Anything and, else? Uh, no, go ahead. That's no, that's everything, sir. I shall resume my duties. Morning. And, and Hamasi actually calls across from uh, her station. Are you taking the Dabo girl with you? I find, um, Ensign. I find the. Um, Accusation in your voice, a rather unprofessional for bridge duty. However, yes, I have decided. I have decided that Ensign, uh, whatever her name was. I was gonna say the oh, one task I gave you was to settle on a name. Uh, She's gonna like that. Ensign, yeah, Ensign Leck and I will 
uh, take we'll, we'll take a more casual flight at a more convenient time. Ah, it's As a, a shame. I'm actually friends with her. She was really looking forward to it. It is. I just sort uh, of raise an eyebrow ever so slightly. Excuse me, Lieutenant, but um, is this ensign uh, certified for the G's that the Valkyrie fighters take? Uh, no. Um, I've I've not yet uh, cla ah, pardon me. I've not yet cleared ensign Lek on the um, me the medical uh, on the medical portion of the flight. I shall run her. I shall instruct her to go visit Doctor Prira to her earliest convenience. Yes, and if anything were to happen to the inside of that cockpit, uh, I am not going to listen to Chief Freepock complain about one of his engineers happening to clean it out. So make sure you clean it if she can't handle the flight. Hamas yes, just shouts, are we doing phrasing? Is phrasing a thing? Proper phrase, uh, phrasing is definitely required for proper grammar, of course. Gorg Tegel swivel in his chair. Yes. Yes, we are. And then swivel back to Darvall. I believe that standard uh, equipment for most passenger flights does include a series of uh, air sickness bags, sir. Very well. Just if I hear anything from Chief Freepock about one of his engineers happening to clean up goo and Gortek will kind of throw a side glance at Hamasi. She gives you a thumbs up. I'm going to just hand the pad to you, and you're going to take care of it. Yes, sir. All right. Any other scenes people want to get out of the way real quick? I want Prier to stroll in. Sure. Let's throw Prier on here. Uh, do, 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 do. Well, it would help if I had you on the right layer. There you go. Howdy, everybody. I, my ears were buzzing, so I decided to take a walk. Hello, Dr. Prier. What's happening up here on the bridge today? Well, what's happening is the commander doesn't know how to work his uh, mute button. Um, good morning, command. Uh, good morning, Dr. Prier. How are you doing today, commander? Other than being stuck in this chair uh i'm doing just fine i'm well caffeinated for once always good although you can be over caffeinated as well i'm a klingon there's no such thing as over caffeinated the commander is correct in this situation we we kind of live off of it i mean blood wine rectogeno just I'll caffeine straight into our veins well, Commander, if you want me to take over for a little bit and you go stretch your legs, I am fully prepared to be in command. That is not a bad idea, Doctor. Um, if I need to take a walk, I will happily call you up here to take the chair. Good to hear. I get stuck in sickbay so much, I forget that there's other parts of the ship sometimes. I completely understand. If it's not here or my quarters lately, I haven't even been able to take my walks around uh, around the boulevard or the promenade or whatever everybody's calling it now. Well, we'll have to take a stroll sometime here soon. Um, and I might need your help with um, uh, forcing our captain to not lead away missions. Um, I'm a big proponent of the uh, archer rule. And I would like him to stay in his chair and let me lead the away missions. Granted, the current one he's on, he's way more qualified than I am, but still. Commander, do you really think the captain's going to listen to me? He has never listened to me once. He he's not going to listen to me either. Uh, I I don't know how. If he's anything like Skull was as a captain, I don't know how you all put up with him. Similar to you, a lot of caffeine and pain medicine. Uh, Commander, it is not above us. There are several written records of a Vulcan performing a Vulcan nerve pinch on an uncooperative superior officer, rendering them inoperative for a temporary period of time. That that's, just sounds like a lot of paperwork. That's a um, that's not a ba bad idea, Lieutenant. Um, though I don't really know the. Vulcan nerve pinch. I do know how to knock someone out with a swift hit to the back. 
I suppose but, that would be uh, classified as an assault against a superior officer, sir. Mm. However, yeah, I suppose so would a Vulcan nerve pinch. True. And um, Gortek will kind of swivel a chair around and look at everybody on the bridge. And this conversation never happened, did it? Uh, yes, what sir. conversation, sir? Exactly, Hamasi. Uh, oh. Uh, well, Gortag, uh, we're getting a hail from the planet. You want me to put it on screen? Might as well. Uh, please. Right. So, uh, appearing on the hollow imager is, uh, one of the away team. Uh, it is not the one that Mirthrin is leading. Uh, and the individual says, uh, this is, uh, Lieutenant Thomas, uh, checking in as per orders. Uh, we are currently in the middle of, uh, deciphering the, uh, alien database. Thought we would check in and inform you about our progress. Uh, sounds good, Lieutenant Thomas. Um, nothing out of the ordinary, I take it? No, not that we've determined so far. Uh, to put it bluntly, sir, it's uh, it's an enigma wrapped in a mystery, wrapped in some sort of a Q joke. Um, frankly, the, the technology level is astounding. Uh, we haven't been able to really understand much of what we're seeing, uh, but we do have an interesting tidbit. Uh, apparently, they call this planet Aether, and I will spell it in chat because it's hard to spell. A-E-T-H-E-R? Um, yep. Very easy to misspell, uh, but we we are know that uh, that whoever made this planet, this this machine, uh, did call the planet Aether. Um, really, what's what's really flummoxing us right now, sir, and it's what uh, I believe the captain is working on is trying to figure out where all the power's coming from. Uh, to put it shortly, sir, uh, it takes about sixty terawatts to make a micro wormhole, and it's temporary. To make a stable wormhole big enough to fit a ship, even a runabout, we're talking somewhere in the exawatt range. Interesting. Um, just out of curiosity, nobody's misplaced a star, have they? Uh, no, sir, but uh, it's purely spitballing and speculation here, sir, but if they are somehow tapping into a star with some sort of technology we haven't seen yet that could explain where all the energy is coming from. Interesting. Um, a suggestion, Commander, if I may. Go ahead, Lieutenant. Perhaps we could uh, talk with the Marissa and compare historical chart star charts with ones that we have available today. They have, after all, inhabited this space for at least roughly the last 2,000 Terran years. Yeah, it's not a bad idea. Um, we don't still happen to have one of their ambassadors on board, do we? Oh, you do, unless you got rid of her. Um, well, I haven't thrown her out yet, so... Uh, that is a good idea. Thank um, you, sir. I shall note it in my log. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. And uh, thank you, Lieutenant Thomas. Um, keep us surprised and make sure you make all your checkpoints of checking back in with us. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, oh. Um, sir, did you like do anything in orbit just now? Uh, I did not, but... And he will spin in his chair to Hamasi. Ensign. I'm not reading anything out of the ordinary here, sir. He'll spin in his chair over to Rosazzo. Lieutenant. Commander. Right. Uh, no, Lieutenant Thomas, we didn't do anything. Uh, what are you reading that we're not? Uh, well, sir, uh, let me just widen the band and hopefully it'll pick up. And uh, after a moment, you hear that there is... What sounds like a klaxon going in the background of uh, Lieutenant Thomas, and he says, uh, apparently some sort of a vessel has set off its emergency beacon. Uh, here, I'll, I'll patch in the translation matrix. And uh, some of you, well, at least people here who were here last time, or anyone who listened to uh, the uh, session uh, from last week, uh, it's the same computer voice. 
the computer voice is saying, Alert! Class U vessel emergency beacon activating, shunting all available power to rescue the individual ship. Sorry, Class U or Class 2? Class U. Umbrella. Okay. Yep. Uh, all right. Um, anybody up here who's, run, who's running a uh, sensor, let's crank those all the way up and see if we can figure out what this vessel is that this thing's talking about. Yes? That sounds like a good idea. I'll help yeah. Hamasi, and I'll take a station as well. All right. So uh, we really need to update Hamasi because we use her a bunch. But uh, if Hamasi could roll me a reason science, uh, Prayer, you may assist with the same. Uh, the difficulty here is going to be a two. If this thing is using a wormhole to rescue somebody... Uh... They could be up to 50,000 light years away. Mm -hmm. So I don't think we would pick them. Uh, sensor operations as a focus? Yep. Does Hamasi have sensor operation as a focus? She should. She is a sensor officer. Uh, yeah, she has sensors as a focus. Just double checking. Oh, for crying out loud. Well, this is a good start. Uh, well, maybe let's see if Hamasi can uh, get you the successes you needed. So who's rolling for her? I can roll Hamasi. All right, go for it. Be reason the science. <clears throat> science. I would take a momentum. Uh, yeah, she's the main roller. So, yeah, I'll take a momentum for an extra die. All right. Can the ship assist or no? Yeah, the, the, I forgot to include the ship. The Amalthea will assist with a sensor science. All right, I got her. Oh, so. if if Amalthea is assisting as well as Prayer, then I won't take the momentum. Well, Prayer got a complication. Yeah, so Hamas That's just what got a when you leave the sick bay. All right, there's uh, three successes on the table. Uh, if the Amalthea gets you another one, you could buy off that complication. All right, do you want to buy off the complication, or do you want two more momentum? I'll buy it off. Why not? All right. So, uh, between Hamasi and Prier, uh Hamasi says, uh, Well, sir, uh, doctors notwithstanding... No, no, sir, sir, you need to push the other button. Uh, it, anyway, uh, there's a massive aperture forming out there. Like, this thing could probably fit a small moon in it. And she directs your attention to the view screen, and you see that sort of in open space... Uh, Far outside of the orbit, but still close enough to be visible. A huge tear in reality is opened up, and coming out of it is a massive ship. Um, this ship is, uh, strangely enough, it appears to be, as it comes out of the wormhole, uh, it has a almost a Federation like saucer to it, but. If this is a Federation ship, the saucer has to be easily, you know, two miles long. Like, this is a huge saucer. Uh, and it also has, as the rest of it emerges, uh, it is a sort of a spindly sort of nacelle arrangement uh, okay. where it doesn't match anything on record. So out of character, you probably already know what's coming, but in character, you've got no idea. As this thing just sort of appears... Huh. Captain, I'm detecting a Federation signature. But this match is no known Starfleet or other Federation vessel on record. Wonderful. Also, its diameter is roughly two miles across its saucer section and roughly 3.5 miles from stern to tip of nacelle. So, in other words, the Amalthea finally found something bigger than it. Yes, sir. I do not like it. May, may, permission to transfer. <laughs> uh, denied, Lieutenant. I need you here because the captain's not. Um, let's... Uh, Bear and, with me. Uh, Lieutenant Thomas is still here, sir. Uh, what just happened in orbit? Um, trying to figure that out. Well, Let me break... Yes? I... Not to interrupt you, sir, but whatever just happened, everything here almost just shut down completely. Uh, there's still emergency power on, but it's 
saying something about reclaiming power from the other side. Uh, we have no idea what that means, but we're looking into it, sir. Uh, but needless to say, I don't think we're generating any more wormholes anytime soon. Understood, Lieutenant. Um, try to get power back if you can't and you need a rescue. Please call your um, your escort vessels that should be over you and get yourself back up here as soon as you can. Uh, understood, sir. I, I don't think there's any threat to us. It's just that the, the main systems here have pretty much gone into overdrive to do whatever happened in orbit. Uh, anyways, uh, we'll, we'll work on this. Uh, Lieutenant Thomas out. All right, bear with me, people. Uh, let's go to yellow alert just to make sure and just to be safe. Uh, bring us about, and yeah, why not? Let's hail them. All right. Oh, opening hailing frequencies. Positioning starship at coordinate zero four zero mark two nine. Oh. And again, because uh, it's a good momentum generator, uh, let's go ahead and actually do a hailing frequencies open as soon as my PDF starts to cooperate. All right, let's see, uh, hailing frequencies open. So anyone who would care to do it, uh, I need a control engineering and the ship will assist you with a communications and engineering. The difficulty here is a zero. Uh, I've got the ship. Okay. Uh, I'm shooting for a 13, I'll do a control engineering. All right, go for it. Uh, nothing from the Amalthea. <laughs> Well, again, a, wow. Prayer, you are just not having good luck these past few days. Apparently not. Um, but yeah, good news. It's difficulty zero, so you still pass. Um, so yeah, channel is opened. Uh, what do you say? Unknown Starfleet vessel. This is the USS Amalthea. Commander Gorteg in command. Please reply. Amasi kind of looks over her, her readings and says, Uh, sir, I probably know why they're not hailing you back. Please tell me there's actually life signs on board. Uh, sure, sir. I can lie and tell you that. I kind of figured you were going to say that. I, I mean, sir, for a vessel that size, there should be something, anything. I, I'm not seeing a single life form. All right. How, um, how far advanced do we think the ship is from a... Can this... we... Uh, that's... Uh, I'm going along the same lines as Rosazzo. Can we get... I hate to say carbon dating, but can we get any sort of information off what the material the hole is made out of or what's powering them to know how old that ship is? We could or attempt to what... link with their computer. However, the Temporal Prime Directive might prevent us from doing so. Um, right. You mean that thing we broke when the Adiona showed up? I would not call that bench, sir. More like origami Right. Uh, this Probably is, uh... Oh, any ahead. data. Or request more information than is necessary. Uh, yeah. How about we just do a generic ping of it to get registry, name... Uh, commission date, things like that. Um, anything other than that, let's not look into. Uh, this is uh, Ensign Hamasi to Chief Repack. Yeah, what are you guys getting us into again up there? Well, uh, we're going to need uh, your metallurgical and otherwise engineering expertise to help solve a mystery. I'm patching the data down to you now if you could take a look at it. Oh, just if I don't have enough reports to do. And then as soon as he sees the uh, universe class, when they, whoa, mama, look at that thing. That is, uh, that is quite a ship. Yeah. Am I going to get my hands on that? Do you need me to go over there? I really, really want to go over there. Well, uh, before you make any jumps out of the window, as it were, uh, I need free pack. I need you to roll me in insight engineering. Uh, this is going to be a difficulty of two. Uh, and I would say that uh, there is no assist on this, not even from the ship, because it is... Well, now that I think about it, I will give you the Amalthea assisting you with a sensors engineering. How about that? All right. Let me just look at my talent and see what I can do.
All right. Uh... Oh dear. That's an interesting one. Yeah. Uh, if someone could get the uh, ship's sensors engineering. I got it. All right. Help if I was on that screen. All right, you get a momentum. Nice. So you do succeed, but there is a complication. Uh, so this is what you learn. Uh, apparently, the ship, as you can see, plastered on its hull uh, in big letters that are bigger than the Callisto classes. Uh, the vessel is apparently the USS Leviathan. Uh, the registry number, I could tell you if you really wanted, but it's not important. Um, but the Leviathan uh, is running a coaxial warp drive, which uh, if, uh, since Heath, if you don't remember what a coaxial warp drive is, um, they showed it on an episode of Voyager. Uh, long story short, uh, the way coaxial warp drive works is it folds the fabric of space, which lets it travel across extremely large distances almost instantaneously. Um right. That should give you enough to pull up the memory alpha thing on it. I'll let you mm -hmm. pontificate from there. Um, the other thing that you notice is that the hull of the vessel is standard fed. Well, it's a little bit more advanced than what the Amalthea has got going on, but it's not like leaps and bounds kind of new material kind of a thing. Um, so I, I actually just watched the drug, the Doug Drexler uh, Trek Yards special. Ah, well, then you probably know more than I do. Um, Fruit Pack is just going to let out a long whistle. And he's like, well, you know, uh, wow, that, that is, how did they, that is insane. All right, well, uh, yeah, you're getting standard Starfleet Hall here. Although this deuterium is in a, uh, it's in a composition, I don't even I, this is orders of magnitude beyond what a replicator could do, honestly. I mean, look at this molecular structure here. That is tight. That is real tight. Uh, uh, they're running... Uh, it looks like their warp drive is something out of out of this world. I, I mean, literally out of this world. Like, it could take you out of this galaxy in an instant. Uh, it's a, It's looking like it's working on some sort of quantum base. I'd, I'd say it's a coaxial drive. This thing, this thing is definitely advanced. Uh, probably a century or two ahead of us. Oh, and uh, as you say all that, uh, everybody who's working sensors notices that the power output of the ship immediately drops and it goes to low levels. Um, probably still enough to support life support and all that, but the ship isn't warping anytime soon. Interest. Well, looks like we just keep getting ships that are out of their time just sent to us. Uh, well, sir, uh, and this is Hamasi, I would like to make a distinction here, sir. Um, <clears throat> I'm not detecting the any signs of temporal signatures. Like, there's no tachyons, there's no solanogen, uh, nothing that would typically indicate a displacement in time uh not a displacement in time accidentally i mean with a coaxial drive you could literally fold yourself right through space and time if you want honestly i mean so they could have been from the future purposely coming to the point now run into whatever trouble they run into and then they get pulled through a wormhole to us well, it's not a bad thought, Chief, but again, I mean, um, it, there should still be something. I, Again, I, I don't know what the specifics of the vessel is, but unless they're violating half a dozen principles of the universe, which they might be... Oh, let me tell you, they already are. So, is it a plausible thought, then, that this ship did what its drive does, and then this wormhole creating machine world <clears throat> air quotes interdicted them out of their jump and brought them here 
Well, looking back through your her logs here, uh, just to get a sense of what I'm looking at, I believe that it was in danger. It was it, the 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 wormhole generator was rescuing it. It was a distress. Are there any signs of damage on the hull of the vessel? It's a good question. And yes, now that, because, uh, you know, it's a huge sip, so it's taking you a little bit to, to look across the surface. Uh, yes, you are seeing in some parts uh, battle scarring. So scorch marks, uh, places of the hull that are missing. Uh, they're not very large hull, uh, holes in the hull, but they're, you can obviously see the flicker of uh, force fields or bulkheads coming into place. Um, which is probably a little disturbing because, again, this is a two-mile-long ship, so holes uh, holes are probably bigger than Callisto classes. So whatever was shooting this thing, kind of a big deal. So did they end up pinging the computer core? Run that by me again? Did they, did they ping the computer core? I knew that was the uh, well, when you try to ping the computer core, the vessel does not give you a return uh, return signal. Basically, whatever pings you throw at the vessel are not coming back. It might not even respond to the signals of standard hails. This might be the equivalent of a radio trying to contact us. Out of character, I believe the uh, universe class has like a fully integrated AI computer core. It might. We'd have to go over and have a look. It doesn't oh, seem to want oh, to talk oh, to us right take now. Take me, take me, take me, take me, take me. It would... For the security of the fleet, we should investigate and see if we can recover their last logs. If they are Captain. being pursued, we need to know if we should be expecting someone else to arrive. And if they were being pursued by things that made that big of a hole, we might be in over our heads. We should also check to make sure that the ship is not going to explode. That and right. make sure they're not injured. Well, Doctor. Commander. Looks like you're leading a uh, an away team. Quick out of character note. Reminder, you do have Admiral Skull, so Gortek, if you want to go on this one, we'll just put the Admiral in charge. I am under orders from Mirthrin to not let Skull command this ship, by the way. <laughs> Is that really what he wrote? Hold on. No. I want to look now. No, it's not. It's not. <clears throat> it's a good idea, though. <laughs> it sounded like something Mirthrin would say. Um. Well, then... Doctor, would you prefer to run the bridge, or would you prefer to lead the away team? We also have Commander Cam that can take charge. Yep, Cam could also take charge. Basically, right, I don't want you to feel like you're pigeonholed into not going. Oh, I don't. I don't care. I, I'm role playing it that he's annoyed by it, but mm -hmm. I. It doesn't matter to me. Because um, Commander, I better go because there might be medical injuries. Which means if you go, then I have to go to make sure you make it back out. You took the words right out that's of my mouth. I mean, that's how it worked last time. Don't remind me. Okay. Um, Bridge to Admiral Skull. Uh, Free Pack would like to do a quick check to see if we're able to transport over. If yeah, you like should shields. be able to transport over, no problem. Okay. There are no shields up at the moment. And yeah, uh, McCall, you do also get the hail as the Admiral. Oh yes, I'll take another glass. Oh, oh yes, uh, Skull here. Go ahead. Admiral, uh, would you like to sit in the big chair again, or would you prefer to send Commander Cam up here? I take it that something has happened that re in which you, uh, which requires an away team be formed, which you would prefer to lead, and thus... Um, looking for someone to fill the big chair? I mean, if you're bored down there in your office, uh, there's a nice big chair and a really big screen up here that you could, you know... By the time you finish that sentence, Skull strides onto the bridge. Mm -hmm. Well, that's a big ship. Yeah. So, we can't get anything remotely from their computer. 
So uh, I'm going to lead an away team over there to find out what happened to them and why they have been pulled here by this uh, wormhole creating planet and why it thinks they're in trouble other than the large gaping holes in its hull. Very well, Commander. I shall coordinate with Merthrin on the surface and uh, with you on the ship. Thank you, Admiral. And uh, uh, try not to destroy the ship, please, as he's walking into the turbo lift. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure I don't have a record of destroying ships. You crashed us into a planet. No, that was. A, I'm pretty sure that was a temporal uh, phenomenon. <laughs> that never happened. <laughs> Not with the Ophion that I remember, anyways. Sure. Um, as the doors close with the Prier and Gortag. Right. All right, so I have I just, Gortag. I have Prier. Uh, I think Free Pack's coming along. Uh, that yeah, leaves... I'd like to bring a couple of uh, engineering hands with me. Okay, noted. Uh, Rizazo, who are you bringing? Rizazo, you're bringing something else. Uh, same Rizazo question. Should definitely come to keep everyone alive and shoot things if necessary. Yeah, I'm. I'm definitely okay. bringing Rizazo. I'm not letting him stay out of this. All right, and then Darval. Is Darval coming, or is a supporting character coming? Hmm. I might want to take Obitas out for a spin. One of the engineering folks. Uh, Obitus is, uh, he does have, uh, QSD as a focus, yeah. along with propulsion theory, so he, he would, could be yeah. useful. Definitely yeah. gonna be on my list of people to bring. Sure, I'll bring Obitus around. Alrighty. Obitus, and then... lead away. Let's grab your packs. Sir! Yes, sir! And then, just for uh, any other characters you want to bring, uh, I will run as NPCs, but anyone else on the supporting characters list you want to bring? All of them. No. Meat shields. Uh, <laughs> no, I'm, I'm fine. I think we're good. Okay. All right, so uh, we will have a scene change, uh, so you do go down one momentum. But uh, with the gathered away team, uh, you guys beam on over into one of the larger open areas, and you end up here. And I'll adjust it for the stream in a moment. Uh, so as you rematerialize uh, in the uh, Leviathan, uh, you end up in what looks like, as you take a look around, a gigantic arboretum and really what you're noticing is that this arboretum uh, connects not only to other arboretums but to recreational areas to what could be shops uh, maybe schools or maybe even full universities um, in general it's almost like you've beamed into uh, say Central Park in New York City where uh, you are just sort of in the middle of greenery that is surrounded by infrastructure or otherwise buildings uh, all around you. And if you look up, uh, you see the ceiling high, high above you uh, is a window to open space. Uh, and the window has to be easily uh, half a kilometer big. Like, it's, it's huge. Everyone sees Rosazzo shiver visibly and shudder and look around kind of anxiously in a way you've never seen before. This place is huge. I, I know, I know. It is horrifying. What? Why? Why? It got, what? Uh... Freepok is going to look around for a uh, station or like a uh, a readout screen. Uh, roll um, me a insight engineering, please. Difficulty two. Uh, doctor, can you make sure your tricorder is uh, is scanning for life signs other than ours at all times, please? Absolutely. All right. So, Freepak, you're looking around, uh, and really what probably strikes you as odd, I mean, even for an arboretum, there is not any panels that you're seeing uh, there's benches and greenery around you. That's kind of what these little circles are, are just sort of, uh, sort of benches around a circular point, uh, backed by shrubbery. 
Um, but even if you squint your eyes and look out uh, towards the north or the south, et cetera, et cetera, you're not seeing anything again that would rec be recognizable as a um, like a traditional console. Am I picking up any life signs? Uh, roll me a... Let's do a Reason Medicine Difficulty mm. 2. Um, xenobiology, Sensor Operations. Yeah, you've got a focus that applies. All right. You are detecting something. Uh, it's not humanoid, whatever it is, but apparently whatever this creature or animal or etc. is, um, you're guessing that it's about the size of a uh, exercise ball. So kind of, you know, one of those big multicolored, like real life exercise balls. Uh, and at the moment, they're supposedly surrounding you in the garden or the arboretum, but you're not seeing anything. Commander, my tricorder's picking up life signs surrounding us, but not seeing anything. They're not human-sized. Think large ball. Uh, Are they tribbles? They don't match triple life signs? For one, I would very much hope they're not triples. For two, uh, let's, Lieutenant Rosazzo, are you seeing anything we can't see? Uh, Rosazzo is just kind of snaps out of whatever trance he was in for a second there and starts actually looking around. All right, roll me a uh, insight security difficulty two. Sorry, I, I do not do good with large open bases. And I was not prepared to be dealing with this. Kind of weird you took a job on a spaceship, isn't it? I took a job on a spaceship because they were enclosed. And yeah, yeah. Uh, Rizazo, you're freaking out a little bit, so you don't notice anything that is out of the ordinary. Well, aside from the fact that, you know, you're in a huge open area. Do the trees seem to be like actual trees or they're kind of like holographic? Oh uh, no, they are they are real trees. The the greenery here is very real. Uh there's actual dirt planted that uh the uh greenery is sustaining itself on. Uh Doctor Well, this may not work, but is there any way to get age on some of the some of the plant life? whether it's the grass, the shrubs, or the trees. Well, all life shows signs of aging. It's just whether we can t pick it up. I can certainly try to figure it out. Uh, might as well. Are there any uh, directional indicators, arrows, pathways that will in uh, indicate, you know, some signage somewhere? I gotcha. Uh, what sort of... Well, let me ask this. Are you asking in general, like, areas of interest or are you just seeing if there's any signage whatsoever uh points of interest are like uh you know people aren't always great with with remembering where they are so i figure there's gonna be some sort of sign to let you know you're here this is here you know gotcha so i'm gonna shift ping you guys around so don't be uh, alarmed if your map view changes uh, so yes, uh, in the middle of the square you guys have beamed into, there is a fountain, and uh, there is a signpost built into the fountain. Uh, it says to the east, so over here, uh, there are several bars, uh, several uh, restaurants, things of that nature, along with the restrooms. Then down here to the south, uh, there are signs for the pool, the racquetball courts and the workout rooms. Then over here, you have uh, Parisi squares to the east, along with uh, more locker rooms. And then to the southeast, or no, to the northeast, uh, there's apparently a bowling alley, like a full-on bowling alley, along with another restaurant. And then to the very north, you're seeing uh, a bunch of shops. <clears throat> Then I'll bring you back to here. Well, I've got one last thing to try. 
Computer, are you still functioning? All right. So you speak aloud. Nothing happens. Well, there's still power. The signs are still working. This fountain is still working, which means something is still controlling it. Um, out of curiosity, GM, these mm -hmm. lift shafts that are on the map, are they visible to us? Uh, yes, uh, you do see that the turbo lift shafts, or at least that's what you're assuming they are, uh, are indeed visible. They are sort of built as uh, slope surfaces, lots of curved surfaces, to otherwise accentuate and not be a, like an eyesore in the middle of all this greenery. Uh, to answer your other question, though, uh, what you see of uh, Abedis is pretty much all the art there is of him. Okay, fair enough. Could I, um, matter if I could make uh, suggestions? Uh, go ahead, Lieutenant. If we examine, looks like there are locker rooms in that direction. Just crew. If we examine them, there might be possessions left. Should I give an indication of the crew? Examining the restaurant might also provide see if food was left if and um, if it was a rapid evacuation or if people had time to pack and clean up pilfering personal possessions I you got a little Ferengi in you or a Lazo I like um, that's not a bad idea how about you and uh, Dr. Preer why don't you guys go and start checking out the locker rooms uh, Razazo I'd, I'd rather have you and I if we split the groups one of us in each group for security reasons. Um, why don't you take the doctor and and uh, expand on that theory and I'll stay with the chief and, uh, and the ensign. Commander, I suggest we find a way to the bridge. Perhaps these lift shafts can get us there? Uh, that's also a good idea and why don't you and the chief work on figuring out how to work their, uh, their lift system? Yes, sir. And I start pushing buttons. All right. So go ahead and separate your, yourselves out where you want to be, uh, and then we will uh, we will. Are there, things are there any panels inside the lift st stations? Uh, there are, yes, uh, and thankfully they are in whatever fares for Federation Common. I'd like to bring one up and bring the MSD up. Okay. So, uh, just to make sure, I've got Gorteg, uh, Obitus, and Freepak in one team, and then I've got uh, Rizazo and Preer in another, yes? Yes. Uh, yep. All right. So Split the party. I know, right? So hold on to that thought, Freepak. We'll get back to you in a moment. So let's focus on uh, Preer and Rizazo for the first part. So uh, Rizazo and Preer, uh, you enter into this uh, rather nice... Uh, bar. It's got a, a tropical feel to it. Uh, all the chairs and all the tables are completely clear. Uh, there doesn't seem to be even behind the bar. There's not even a bottle or a glass out of place. Uh, it's quite literally looks like someone had sort of cleaned up for the night or had otherwise, um, you know, sort of staged the area so that it looks nice. Uh, but you're not seeing any signs that there were people here. This is very peculiar, Lieutenant. It's, you know, Rizazo can't, relaxes visibly as soon as he enters the enclosed space of the restaurant. Sense ceiling again. Mm -hmm. Lieutenant, uh, yes. mm -hmm. do you want me to give you a stimulant so you're not so uh, nervous? It was just unexpected now that I'm, I have time to center myself. I, I should be fine. I, I have operated on planets before, but being in a park and being unable to sense the dimensions is is disturbing at first. It is horrible, like being at Starfleet Academy. Noted. I don't... Hmm. The absence of food does suggest either that they had time to evacuate, or the ship was never fully crewed. Or there's some form of automation cleaning. Or it happened when this business was not open. All are decent possibilities. And prayer. Yep. Uh, oh, go ahead. I, see, I was just going to suggest scan of 
table surfaces, see if there's residual food particles. Mm -hmm. That's where I was going to go. So prayer, you know, you start a scan of the area and you realize that, you know, those, those life forms you were detecting earlier, supposedly there's one behind the bar and then there's another down here uh, around that sort of corner. I'm picking up two of those strange life forms again. Apparently there's one behind the bar here. Hmm. Now that the, we've lo kind of located one, let's do a focused uh, scan and see if we can pinpoint it a little bit more. Okay. Could it be out of phase? Do you have a medical tricorder? I do. All right, because that'll give you special bonuses. And stuff. Mm hmm. All right. Out of phase is a decent possibility, Lieutenant. So yeah, if you want to do a, a deeper scan, this is going to be a... Uh, it's called a control in a medicine. A difficulty of three. Mind if I take a momentum for a third die? Go for it. And would my xenobiology focus come into play? I would say it would, yes. So my talent of dedicated focus is xenobiology. If I get a critical success, I get a bonus momentum. Nice. Ooh, uh, so close. I have cautious medicine as well. All right. So close. Ah. Uh, I am going to let this succeed, but it's going to be at a cost, and that cost is, uh, as you uh, run a more intensive scan, you see forming before you almost this ghastly apparition, uh, and the apparition formulates into a uh, almost like a uh, an amoeba with uh, two large mandibles uh, below it. You probably already know where this is going, but uh, that appears on screen. Yes, it is a Metroid. I am totally original, sue me. Uh, but it does manifest into reality, and it does attack. Oh, and for extra fun, I'm going to spend some threat that uh, Gorteg, Obidus, and Freepak, that at the same time, uh, hey, uh, some materialized by you as well. Uh, Nintendo don't actually sue us. Yeah, you know. You know, free use. I think we're fine. I mean, McCall used uh, Pokemon yesterday, so, you know. Yep. I think we're fine. Uh, but in any event, we are going to go into structured combat because, uh, yeah. All right, so let's get these on here. And it is going to be the player's turn first, so whichever one of you would care to go. Um, since I'm probably the one that's going to get attacked, I'm going to try to hit this one first. Okay. Maybe also back up behind me. Yeah, I'll do a back up and shoot. Okay. So it's going to be a uh, control security difficulty of two. Huh. <gasps> you hit it. Go ahead and roll me some damage. I only get four challenge dot. No. How many challenge dot do I get? Uh, if you're using a type two phaser, uh, it's three plus your security, so five. All right. So, you know, you back up, you take a shot, and you notice that the creature, whatever the hell it is, uh, it does take the hit, but it almost seems to feed on the energy. Uh, it's hard to tell whether or not you just fed it, or if you pissed it off, or... I don't know. Uh, all you know is that you hit it with your phaser and it didn't go down. Lieutenant, this could be a little interesting by this time I'm back here. Do I see a, a change in the appearance of the creature? Does it like glow brighter as the phaser hits it? It does glow brighter, yes. Not a good sign. And yeah, we're gonna cut back over to uh, Team 2. And uh, hey, Gortag, how you doing there, buddy? Alright, so uh, the creature nearest to Gorteg swoops in to uh, 
try to, uh, you know, latch itself onto you. Uh, Gortag, I need you to roll me a daring security, please. And if you get as if you get literally one success, you may melee attack this thing in return. Uh, sounds wonderful. <clears throat> uh, daring security, right? Right. Mm -hmm. Please don't die. I'm trying not to. Don't die in the game or in real life. Yes. Yep. Working on that too. Uh. Hand-to-hand -hand combat sounds good. Yep. As a focus. Wow. How about that? Nice. Wow. So, uh, yeah, you get four momentum from that because, uh, yeah. Uh, so yeah, Gortek, go ahead and roll me your unarmed attack damage. Um. Oh, I didn't say I was going to bring my detang. So, um, unarmed damage would be secure, just straight security, right? Uh, security plus one. Okay. Um, I know I don't have any talents to help with that. Uh, can I spend one of the momentum I just generated to reroll all those zeros? Sure. Son of a... <laughs> you got five. You did get five. And, uh, of course, Gortek, you heard the phaser shot uh, from across the Arboretum, but uh, your attention is more focused on the thing coming towards you. And, uh, you know, you're a Klingon. You're used to this sort of thing. So as it swoops towards you, uh, you sort of sidestep it and then give it a, a good old right hook. And the difference is, uh, when you do punch it, uh, it does make full contact, and this thing does go down. It's not dead. It's just not, you know, actively attacking you. It's like on the floor kind of a thing. Got it. And yeah, uh, at this point, it goes back to the players. So any one of you that hasn't gone. Can, since we, since this is literally the first time anyone's actually looking at Obidus, mm -hmm. can, based on what I can see of him, would it be unreasonable to say that he has some sort of clawed, unarmed strike? Yeah, I would say that uh, he probably has a vicious one on his unarmed. Okay, good to know. Um... So on on instinct, he's going to lunge forward and try to slash at this one. All righty. Daring security, please. Difficulty of one. Security. And uh, all you need to do is roll uh, two successes here. Considering how bad my uh, daring security is, yeah, that's not going to work. Oh, dear. So uh, the complication... And a failure means that as you try to rush forward and uh, claw slash punch this thing, whatever it is, uh, it is going to latch onto your arm and immediately you feel your, uh, almost like your soul or like all of the energy being sapped out of you. And you are going to take a grand total of one damage as uh, this thing is now attached to you. And uh, yeah. You uh, you are currently being grappled by this thing for all intents and purposes. I start waving my arm frantically. Yep, it is firmly attached. All right, so uh, we'll go back to team one in a second. But free pack, how you doing, buddy? Oh, you know, waiting for it to come. Well, uh, the good news is uh, if you roll me three successes here and a daring security. You won't be uh, won't get latched onto you yourself. They got a crit and a complication. Y'all. Which I'm gonna say for that complication, I'm just gonna give you guys two momentum. Sweet. Uh, I'd like to spend the momentum to get extra an extra. Okay. Three successes. Nice. Go ahead and roll me your unarmed attack damage. Oh, I've also got a small frame trait, so I think I'm a little harder to hit. I don't know how you want to roll that, but I can. I'm I'm a little more light than most humanoids. Uh, unarmed what? 
Uh, unarmed should be uh, one plus your security, so <laughs> all of two challenge dies. Oh man, my macros are not. Hold on a second. All right, two damage. So yeah, you uh, you're you're not as graceful as uh, Gortag maybe, but you are able to dodge and kind of bob out of the way as this thing lunges towards you. And yeah, uh, you kind of slap it almost, and uh, the creature ah. screams. But uh, yeah, that uh, that's all going on there. Uh, meanwhile, up here with Team One, uh, Prier, how you doing, buddy? Yo, yeah, boy. All right, well, Prier, uh, the good news is if you uh, roll two successes on your daring security, uh, the thing will not latch onto you. All right, you may nice. do your unarmed attack damage. In fact, I believe you get uh, one momentum from that, and you may roll your unarmed attack damage. All right. I will say you are capped at six momentum at the moment, so you do have options here. You could spend, uh, for example, you could spend a flat two uh, momentum to add two more damage. Uh, you could just spend one momentum to reroll that zero and hope it's enough. Or, you know, you could just keep the six momentum. Let's spend the flat two to down this one. All right, so this one again, uh, as you swoop for as it swoops forward towards you, you knock it down to the ground, and it remains there on the floor. And it is at this point that uh, the other one comes out from around the co corner and sees Rosazzo. And uh, Rosazzo, same thing, daring security from you. Number to beat here is a two. I'm going to buy a third dice with threat if I can. Okay. <clears throat> That'll trigger my bold. That is enough, and you can reroll that zero. Do it. Nope, all right. Not enough. All right, so yes, go ahead and roll me your unarmed attack, which for you should be five. And I'm just out of curiosity, are you using your robot arm for this? Are you using Horda agility? Like, paint, paint us a I picture. I would actually like to use a, a chair if I could. A chair. A chair. <laughs> okay. It's not quite unarmed, but all right. All right, so that is four damage. Do you want to do anything with momentum for that? I would spend one to reroll the two zeros. Yeah, I'm going to spend one momentum to reroll those two zeros. All right. That is enough. You chair the creature, and it just slaps to the floor like someone took a jellyfish and just threw it against the floor. It's a very wet, visceral sound. Um <laughs> But yeah, uh, with that said, it is now back to the player's turn. Um, I think I'm the only one that hasn't actually taken a turn, maybe? Uh, I haven't. In fact, the oh. only one of you that's actually gone uh, was Prier, because everything else sort of happened at once. Uh, no, okay. Obidus went. Oh, Obidus went, yeah. So Freepak, Gorteg, and Prier and Rosazzo have yet to go. Because that's kind of the benefit of melee attacks in the system is even if the attacker fails, the defender can hit them instead, which makes it go much faster. Um, I'm gonna move around and see if I can get Obdus unattached from this thing. Okay. Uh, this would be a let's call it a fitness and security. Uh, the difficulty here would be a three. Okay. Um, can I assist in this? Uh, how would you be assisting is the question. By pulling in the opposite direction. Sure, why not? Alright. Um, I will spend a momentum. Okay. And fitness security. Of course. Oh dear. Yeah, um, nope. this thing's on me. Let's see. OK. 
Can I spin my determination to reroll all that? You certainly could. What value are you tapping? Um, battle will be my legacy. Sure, why not? Watch me do it all over again. Ah, much better. Yeah, much, much better. Much, much better. In fact, you uh, you get two momentum from that. And yeah, you are able to pry this creature off of Obidus. And uh, the only downside is now the thing is like clashing its mandibles in your face. Like, it's a very unpleasant sensation. Um, I just got us two momentum, so we're at four total, correct? Yep. Correct. Can I spend the two momentum to keep the initiative and go again? Uh, you could do a swift task, which would be two momentum. And it would let you do another action, but it would be at an increased difficulty. Because what I'm thinking, <laughs> what I'm thinking of doing, is hucking this thing at the uh, glass wall of the shift mm -hmm. or the shaft to see if I can get it, you know, splatted against the glass. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah, why not? Just because it's funny. I'll spend the two momentum to take a swift action to huck this thing into the glass on the outside of the uh, lift shaft. All right, so this I'm going to count as a uh, improvised ranged attack. So that's going to be a control and a security. Uh, because you swift task, the difficulty is a three. Okay, uh, I'll spend a momentum for a third dice. Uh, yeah, Do you have security? Yeah. Damn it. Okay. Yeah. So unfortunately, you throw the thing. Uh, it doesn't quite get to the wall. Uh, it gets to about here. But uh, hey, it's no longer trying to eat your face, so small blessings. And uh, speaking of small blessings, the creature's turn. Uh, it is going to actually start to fly off. Uh, it gets probably down to here, and uh, it rolls back around to the players. So I believe Rizazo and Freepak are the only ones who haven't gone yet. Uh, at least two are, are they just unconscious or dead? I mean, if you were attacking lethal, that would have given me threat, so I always assume that you do non-lethal unless yeah. you tell me otherwise. I'm just wondering if they like explode from the hits, or they just fall unconscious. Nah, they just fall unconscious. Uh, well, seeing as the ones over B are, are unconscious, I guess I'll go. Uh, yeah. Free, Free Pock is just going to, like, shut his eyes and then start windmilling his hands, screaming, ah! and run at this. <laughs> ah, yes, the classic Ferengi technique. Yeah, it's going to be a uh, daring security, please. Difficulty of one. I would like to give you a threat for another guy. Sure. Um, I also have my medal, which allows me to roll a challenge die whenever I spend threat. Um, and if I get an effect, it removes that threat. Alright, go ahead and roll that challenge die then. Hey, nice. nice. Alright, so what was that roll? Daring security? Yep. My worst stats. Well, you did get the one success. Let's see how it fares. Uh, yes, so Ty goes to the attacker. So yeah, go ahead and roll me another two challenge dice, please. So yeah, you uh, you feel some of your fists uh, hit this thing. It's almost like, again, a jellyfish where you punch it. And it's kind of a gooey, slimy surface. But you don't do a whole lot of damage. Uh, in fact, the, the thing almost screes in a questioning, what the hell was that? And yeah, I think the only person who hasn't gone at this point is Rizazo. So Rizazo, what are you doing? Uh, Free pack is suitably out of breath at this point. Ugh. At this point, I think I'm just going to grab a table and like flip it over top of them to kind of pin them slightly and just kind of hold them in place. Okay. So, so they, they don't get up. All right. So... 
that's the end of the round. So on the fresh new round, the uh, creatures are going to get to go next. And you're noticing... Oh, hold on. You're noticing that they have started to become insubstantial and see-through, more so than usual. And uh, the creature uh, nearest to Free Pack is just going to sort of laze off to the east and disappear. And the same will go for the one to the south as it goes through a door and disappears. And you guys are now out of combat. I'm quickly going to scan the two that are pinned. All right, I need you to roll me a... Let's do a Reason Medicine. And the difficulty here will be a three. Mind if I take the last momentum for a third die? Go ahead. <clears throat> Xenobiology. Yep. I'm going to reroll that at zero because I have cautious medicine and can do it anyway. All right. Go for it. And, and we get a bonus momentum because I rolled a critical six. All right. Yeah, it's worth a shot. All right, so you do oh, get the one good. momentum then. And yeah, uh, what you find out is that uh, these creatures are native to subspace and that uh, they do feed on energy of most varieties and that, uh, you know, unless there's something anchoring them to this reality, they tend to phase in and out pretty quickly. In fact, as you are scanning these unconscious forms, they're already beginning to fade back to subspace. I'll tap my communicator. Prayer to Gortag. Go ahead, Doctor. I'm assuming you guys were attacked by the ball-like creatures as well. Uh, yes, we were. Uh, Rosazo and I uh, were able to pin to. I got a good scan. They seem to be native to subspace. Interesting. Uh, do we know why they're in the ship yet? Not yet. They seem to anchor themselves to a food source. They feed off energy. So note to everyone, uh, melee versus energy weapons. In the background, you just hear Freeback screaming, and tell your friends not to mess with us either. Well, if... Uh... If what the chief chief said uh, is true about the engines of the ship, chances are these things, this is like a buffet for them. Huh? Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Coaxial drives. They uh, they use sub uh, subatomic particles. You know, so this is uh, if they're feeding off a of subspace, yeah, this is definitely going to be a definite uh, food source for them. Right. So what you're saying is we are on aboard a magnet. Yeah, and these things are little bits of uh, of ferrous metal. <clears throat> All right, um, let's go down. Let's go down engineering. Let's not go to the bridge. Let's go to engineering and see if Freepok can. Um, well, if I shut the food. Down. yeah, if I can shut down the. Uh subatomic particle generator that might have something to do uh, we might that might have some effect on them that's that's what I'm thinking and I, I remember a report of one of the enterprises whichever one Picard before he blew it up um, having some sort of creature attached to the ship and feeding off its its uh, pulsion system so yeah, let's get down there and either shut it off or reverse it or something to make these things not want to be here. Rizaz and I will join you here momentarily. I'd still like to. I would still like to check out the locker rooms for Chief one moment. Back. If I recall correctly from the Voyager re report when they encountered this thing, the effects of a coaxial warp drive couldn't be dispersed with a chrono ah, with a chromoelectric pulse. If, could we somehow use the reconfigure the engines, generate one of those, and somehow push these blights out of here? Well, yeah, we we could try that. Uh, the thing is, it's you're, the engine 
it's drawing in the subatomic particles from subspace. So we're going to shut that off first, and then we could use that to disperse the subatomic particles away from us that, that have already been drawn it. Like, lead them away, kind of thing. Right. Cool. Let's do it. All right. I'm going to punch up the MSD and locate engineering, and I guess we can just head off and, just, like, if the turbo lifts even work, because that's a long walk. Yeah, I was going to say, the turbo lifts are definitely working, and what you're noticing on the MSD is that the turbo lifts are actually an emergency uh, manu uh, em eh, an emergency system that most of the transition around this ship is either site to site transport or is basically like a car being driven around. But yeah. Uh, Rizazo, real quick, as you stop in the locker rooms, uh, again, it's very odd. You're not seeing any personal effects, like not even, you know, towels or, uh, you know, signs that someone has used this locker room at all. Um, it's, it's a very eerie feeling. These things ate all the clothing. Well, uh, we'll say that as you guys are heading down uh, one of the corridors, well, you know, as you take a turbo lift and, you know, you start to head towards main engineering, uh, what you notice is that the actual corridors of this ship are very, uh, very, I hate to use the word futuristic, but uh, very sleek, uh, very bright, uh, very, uh, very clean. And uh, it takes you maybe about a 10-minute lift ride until you all emerge in the engine room. And, the ship is bloody bright. Oh, yeah. And the engine room is more like an overlook over a massive generator. And uh, you walk in and you see that the uh, warp core, such as it is, uh, is surrounding this giant blue circular... Uh, ball of plasma and the uh, matter-antimatter reaction. Uh, the good news is you're not seeing any of the creatures in here. The bad news is, is that when you go up to one of the consoles to start trying to get information, uh, you are seeing that the core is in process of complete shutdown. And to sort of paint the picture here, this thing is massive enough that if the core goes completely offline, there's very little chance you'll ever get it back online. At least with your current situation. Oh, this is not good. Uh, uh, I, if this library, thing, Chief? Well, this thing's in the middle of shutdown, and it's... Uh, I don't know if I'm going to be able to get this thing back and running. But, I mean, and if this thing is the source, there's going to be lots of these things around here. Well, I'll pick up a console and start poking it. Uh, see if I can't figure out a uh, either a emergency bypass or if I can suspend the shutdown process and put it into like a sleep setting instead. Sure, roll me a uh, Insight Engineering difficulty of three. Insight Engineering. I was going to say the exact same thing. Hey. Ah, but I have Propulsion Theory. Which um, I would let apply. Uh, while the rolls are happening, um, uh, Doctor, you said you, um, you said you scanned these things, correct? Correct. You said it, they feed off energy. I'm, I'm, I'm still stuck on this idea, and I could be wrong, and the chief will probably tell me I'm wrong because engineering is not my strong suit. Is there any type of energy that these things are, let's say, repelled by? Or like something we could maybe turn the energy of this ship into a bug repellent? It did not seem that uh, way when I scanned it, but that doesn't mean that uh, 
it is impossible that there is an energy that would repel them. Um, or, Chief, do you think we could... I don't know. Because if we put the, the, the war bubble around the ship, that won't stop the subspace creatures from getting in, correct? Probably not, no. Is there any way we could shield the ship against subspace? I mean, normally, on a normal ship, I'd say no. But with this thing and the jet amount of energy it generates, uh, I mean, we could certainly try. I mean, I'd have to. We'd have to get the warp core. Uh, we'd have to get some sort of power going back up. Shut down. We'd have to reverse this shutdown, which I'm afraid is going to bring more of them. We'd have to get the computer core online, and then we'd have to reconfigure the shield somehow to divert uh, subspace particulate from entering. So what I'm hearing is, it's possible. I mean, anything is really possible, especially I mean, if you've got the time for it. I mean, are, are you... Uh, do you think you can't do it? I mean, I can call one of the other ships well, to have well, their well, engineer. Well, I'm not saying that now. Like, let's not, let's not beat a man while he's down here, right? Well, Give me some time. You deal with your jellyfish. Leave the uh, machinery. To for your pack, do you need assistance? Uh, I, I'm not going to say no to a hand. I mean, just, but it, this isn't a body. So careful where you poke. My first host was an engineer. I know what I am doing. All right. So two and a half engineers. And I look at free pocket. That wasn't a short joke. I was counting prayer as the half. Uh, all right. I'd like to attempt to get this uh, warp core from st stop this warp core from shutting. All right. Uh, let's have you roll an inside engineering. And for the record, I did take threat for uh, Avidus's failure. Fair enough. I've got diagnostics and warp core mechanics. Yeah, I would say either would apply here. Could I assist uh, mm -hmm. since I have my joint trill trait? Yeah, I would say you could assist, but I'm going to increase the complication Oof. range, not that I need to. Oh. I... Engineering. All right, two successes. So, free pack, what you determine, uh, and with the help of Preer, uh, what you're determining is that uh, there is a way to stop this but it's not a very good solution. Well, let me present it to you, and you can decide whether it's good or not. The reason the reactor is shutting down is because the backup fuel reserves are more or less what's sustaining it right now. Something has gone on with the primary fuel reserves that it's not flowing correctly. And in order, it's sort of like a catch-22. In order to free up the primary fuel reserves, the core has to be operating at full efficiency, but because it's shutting down, because it doesn't have the main fuel reserves, you can't do that, if that makes any sense. So again, it's it's a catch-22 uh, kind of a situation. Um, so what occurs to you is you could supplement the fuel reserves and let this thing sort of self-correct. However, in order to do that, you would have to set up a transfer beam from the Amalthea and sacrifice about 50 to 75% of the Amalthea's fuel reserves. Oh, Commander, this isn't looking that great. Uh, this thing is running low on power, and I, and I honestly don't understand why. They're, something's interrupting the main fuel line, and right now it's running off of its backup, but in order to re-engage the primary fuel source, the warp core has to be running full tilt, and the backup just does not have the power. Honestly, it's a bad design, if you ask me. I mean, these future people clearly just didn't get this right. I'll, I'm going to have to make a note somewhere so somewhere in the future someone corrects this. Um, does the readings in indicate where the... So, if I'm understanding this right, there's... There's enough. There's not enough fuel in the tank, so it's just sucking on empty. Pretty much, yeah. Well, yeah, okay. and I, we could. I don't know if this is okay with you, but we could set up a transfer energy transference beam, uh, 
uh, between the Amalthea and the ship, and in order to jumpstart essentially the this warp core. I'm detecting a very big butt coming soon. Well, it's going to take a lot of Amalthea's power, like a lot, a lot, as well as possibly contaminating us with these lovely little energy feeding things. Technical term. All right. <clears throat> Is there? Oh. And there's no other ship or anything in the area that we could transfer energy from. Nope. And uh, that was very deliberate in that the only ship in the area is the Amalthea. Obviously the Callistos too, but the Amalthea is probably the only thing generating enough power to help here. Yeah, Callisto's too small. So... See, the only way we can shut down this engine is if we transfer what... how much power from Dumalthea? About 70% of it by our calculations, sir. And if we don't shut down? Uh, if we don't shut down, then this warp core stays shut down, and then... We basically have no other options. This is going to be a floating hunk of nothing. A very futuristic, nice-looking nothing. This this ship does not belong in this time, and keeping it here will possibly pollute the timeline. Alternative would be destroy it. I mean, there is no one aboard. I, I Honestly, as an engineer, that's breaking my heart, though. I mean, like, I really would love to run around this place, but not my call to make. I'm just giving you the details. And that's a higher up issue. And how how long would it take to get the Amalthea's energy supply back up to full if we dump the power to here? Uh, if the transference beam goes uninterrupted, I'd say a good order of about six hours. I'll be honest, that's a lot less than I thought it was going to be, and a lot... Uh, okay. I don't know if that's accurate with the GM. I kind of just pulled that one out of my Yeah, head. I was going to say, I'm looking at uh, I'm looking at your current uh, supplies list here to see if I did anything. Um, yeah, because we never uh, certified how much fuel reserves you have remaining. Uh, I would say that... It would take, again, about 70% of your deuterium and anti-deuterium. So you would be left with about 30% of your reserves. And that means your operational time cuts from about five years down to about a year. So maybe I can no math properly. Of, and there's no way of restocking those reserves. Uh, I mean, if you found a ball of ice, like a comet, you could restock some of those reserves. Uh, I mean, there there are ways to get deuterium and anti-deuterium. It's just you have to find the raw materials for it. I mean, Voyager did it, so if Voyager can do it, you guys can do it. Well, a Voy funny thing that a funny thing, uh, um, the anti of of an element or or of a, a particle actually, uh, you find this with quarks. They will actually flip sometimes. So if we could find a way to manipulate the uh, basic uh, deuterium and find a large enough source of it, we could flip a bunch of that into anti-deuterium. Is an option. Um, okay. Too bad we're too far away from that um, that station that would repair this thing for us. Mm -hmm. uh, we could go back there and have that restock us. Uh... The, the deuterium and anti-deuterium, that would be pretty expensive. We already had to pay them. Um, Alright, is there any way of doing this energy transfer without um, drawing these subspace creatures to the Amalthea? I honestly don't think so. I mean, I don't know. I don't know. It's. I mean, we're, tra we're, we're transferring the energy to the ship. So... In essence, I really don't understand why they would follow the feeding back to us since they're, we're just giving them the energy. If we were taking it from the ship, I could see that. I yeah, guess all we really have to do is help. True. Because, I mean, if they see one sort of source of food, 
it's like ants. They'll follow the food back to where it's more plentiful, is what I'm concerned with. Right, but we're sending the food to them, technically. So it's more plentiful when they're in. True. And we're, we're lessening air reserves of it, so that's less of it on air in. Okay, well... Alright. Let me... I know what I want to do, but I want someone else's opinion real quick. Uh, I'm going to tap my combat badge. Uh, away team to Amalthia. Amalthia here, go ahead. Uh, can you put the Admiral on? One moment. And you are connected with the Admiral. Admiral Skull. Oh, uh, I think he stepped out. Did he? Yeah, he went AFK. Ah, uh, crap. Okay, well, then I'll just make the decision myself. Um, Chief, go ahead and rig the ship and um, send information to whoever you left behind in charge of engineering, and let's start this energy transfer. Uh, Lieutenant Rosazzo is correct. The ship doesn't belong here, nor should we leave it here as a hulk to let someone else rip it apart. Though, if we were going to do that, Chief, I'm along the same mindset as you, and we would rip everything we could use off of it first. But... Let's try. Now we're talking, first. Chief. You said that there was something blocking the energy from the primary uh, right. power source. Could we unclog it? There are protocols and procedures that to do that built in here, but uh, the warp core has to be at main at maximum power in order to re-engage it. That's the essential the issue. That's what we're doing. We're jump starting it back to full. So that we can re-engage those those uh, those primary power lines. Well, I'm thinking, if these creatures are feeding off en energy, how likely is it that they are the things causing the clog? Oh, they're they're most certainly what uh, what what caused the initial uh, drop in power, and why they're on uh, the. Um, an emergency. I don't know if they're literally feeding off of a line somewhere or not, because I can't really pick these things. But Wait. if we jumpstart the engine, one to just drain again rapidly, and we'll end up with Amalthia low powered and these things breeding possibly what if, like triples. What if we? What if we? Uh, uh, Chief, you said something. What if we send out a pulse of energy, maybe a small. A smaller version of what would be required to get the ship up and running to send these creatures away a chromoelectric pulse that's that was the idea yeah get this thing back up to full energy in order to power its systems and then we can reconfigure it to um a middle of a chromoelectric pulse <clears throat> would get the and that would be able to get these things to leave the ship to where we can send it back to where it's supposed to go and they won't come back after us they generate. I, I wouldn't think they would. Okay, then uh, yeah, let's rig this thing to do that, and let's get working on it. That's pretty simple. I've just got to go to the polar polaritic modulator and then uh, dilute the particle stream. Okay, get to it. Work the problem. All right. All right. Uh, Chief to Liru. This is Liru. Go ahead. Uh, we're going to be initiating a particle energy transference beam from the Amalthea's uh, warp core directly to the ships. Uh, I, you can use the deflector arrays. Uh, I'm going to need you to keep that side stable, and we're going to be basically pa or, uh, passing off 70% of Amalthea's power up. Roger that. We'll make sure everything doesn't blow up over here. All right. And yeah, uh, so to kind of clear the air a little bit, the reason why it feels weird that you have to bring the core back up to full power uh, is because it's kind of a Chernobyl situation where the designers of this thing uh, specifically wanted the core to be starved of power and energy. That way it wouldn't just keep running forever um, in case something went wrong. Because that was the problem with Chernobyl was that there was no way to turn that thing off. So there is an engineering principle behind all this. It's just a little weird. Um, but in any case, uh, in order to accomplish what you guys have in mind, 
You are going to be doing an extended task with a work track of 16, a magnitude of 4, a difficulty of 5, and a resistance of 1. The uh, task for this is going to be a daring engineering, and the Amalthia will be assisting you with an engines and engineering. All right, what am I rolling as engineer? A daring engineering. And the difficulty is five to start with. Could I still assist with, since I enacted my uh, trail trait? You may certainly do so, yes. All right, I've got Miracle Worker. Well, you, you need so, two more successes here before that even comes right. into play. Who's got the mouth? Yeah. My bad. Uh, I got the mouth. What was the role for it? Engines engineering. Right. Hey, there's your nice. two. There's your five. All right, so yeah, free pack. Now you may roll your uh, seven challenge die. And this is where Miracle Worker would come into play. I've also got in the nick of time. All right, noted. All right, so, so there is a resistance of one on this, so you're only doing four work at the moment, which means you either need to give me the one momentum for the flat plus one, or you need to spend the one momentum to reroll those three zeros. I like the idea of re-rolling the three zeros. More chance of more successes. Right. More I'll re-roll. I'll re-roll those three. All right. Wow. So nice. that's a that's a grand total of eight work done, which is enough to cause two breakthroughs. Well, uh, uh, as a nick of time, for every um, I get an additional work for every effect rolled. Ah, well, in that case, that is uh, six, seven. Uh, well, let me just sound here. That's four plus, so that would have been 13 down to 12. So you're 12 out of 16 work. Uh, I believe that is correct. So yes, your magnitude is now a two. Your difficulty is now a three. The resistance is still there. And, you know, as Freepex said, this is a very standard procedure, even for a ship uh, as advanced as this. Um, you know, the, the power transfer beam is is working nominally and... With a little bit more juice, you probably could stabilize this thing and do the pulse that uh, would potentially get rid of these creatures. Uh, where does um, Miracle Worker come into effect? Let's see. Uh, Miracle have we Worker is what's giving you this second breakthrough. All right. Okay, good. Bam. All right, so we have to roll again. Yep, you got to uh, do that whole roll again. Uh, the difficulty this time is only a three. Okay. Oof. So, I have a question. Mm -hmm. um, only because uh, GM Josh uses it so much on the Akagi. Mm -hmm. Is the commander giving his determination to someone else uh, only a captain thing, or is it a talent? It's a captain thing, I believe. Yeah, I, yeah. I know it's a captain thing. Uh, for Gore-Tag, since you're XO, I believe you can spend it to make uh, three momentum appear out of nowhere. Let me look. If that's the case, uh, Chief, would you happen to like three momentum? I would. Let's take a look. When another character in communication with the executive officer spends a point of determination, the executive officer may spend three momentum to let that character regain the spent point of determination. So he would have to spend his determination, and then you would have to spend three momentum right. that you don't have uh, so i had that backwards okay but okay, well, we do need I to see the ship threat to re-roll one of the, that zero nope the only way to re-roll is uh with determination okay well i can spend a determination can i you can but let's see where the ship gets you first because it could crit again nope yeah so right now you're at one out of three successes which means you would have to crit on that roll Oof. Um, I've also got Seek Advantage, which will let me re-roll a d20 if I spend a turn. I get a bonus for d20 and I can re-roll a d20. Uh, 
So I'd like to spend a determination to root it to uh, reroll d20. Okay. Uh, what value are you tapping? Uh, opportunity plus instinct equals profit. Sure. So I would just do a normal daring engineering, but only roll one d20. Uh, yes. Oh, but oh, but seek advantage lets me re-roll another d20. So I'm going to re-roll. Roll, uh, or should I even do that? Because I rolled one already. Let me uh, let me look up seek advantage. Do you know which book it's in? Uh, I believe it's in Jester's PD uh, homebrew, right? Do you remember which homebrew? Yeah, I've got it here somewhere. Hold on. Because if it's a Ferengi thing, it'll be in the DS9 book. Oh, okay. Uh, nope, not seeing... No seek advantage there. All right, hold on. we got to figure out where this is coming from. Uh, it's in Jester's Homebrew. Uh, it's, you are continuously looking for ways to advance your agenda and personal goals. When you spend a point of determination for a bonus d20, uh, you can also reroll a d20. Okay, so it would have had to have been the determination you spent at the beginning before the roll. My bad. So, yeah. Uh, I will say that you could just choose to fail on this. The downside is you would lose uh, some work uh, off the work track for it. I mean, that kind of sounds like our only option. Unless I spend this determined to re-roll a dice, right? Yep, and you would have to be getting a crit in order to succeed. I'm going to try. All right. You can technically re-roll both, can't you? Yeah, you could re-roll both if you wanted to. Oh. Well, I mean, I've already. Yeah, I risk the risk of being end up. I mean, at worst, we just end up failing it. Yeah. All right. So you are going to fail this, unfortunately. And uh, wow. Well, lucky you. You don't lose any on the work track. Wow. Wow. Yeah, that's that's impressive. So yeah, you're still sitting at uh, twelve out of sixteen work, and you may re-roll all that stuff again for a new task. All right, we're finally starting to see successes from the ship. That's a good sign. Can I assist in, in any way? Uh, only one other person can assist. So if Prier wants to step aside, uh, yeah, so Prier can not, assist. already succeeded. That's can fine I... by me. Yeah, there's no point in me spending threat then. Three successes. So Freepak, go ahead and roll me another uh, seven challenge die, please. All right, Boom. and that is enough to complete the extended task. So after draining the the Amalthea like a uh, a battery pack, uh, the lights of the Leviathan uh, flicker for a moment and then go full brightness as the core uh, begins churning and otherwise uh, reactivating itself. And at the same time, you rig up the thing to set up the chromoelectric pulse, and you feel it pass through you. It doesn't do anything to you. Uh, but you do notice it's passing, and after a moment, uh, one of the nearby consoles lights up, and uh, a voice comes from it and says, This is Leviathan AI. Name. Error. Ready to assist. Oh, hey there, sexy. Uh, always enjoyed a ship with a weird name. Error. What is that? Is that, is that, uh... Delton? Uh, Chief, I don't think we have time for you to flirt with the ship. Alright. Um, uh, ship, a computer, can you scan for any subatomic uh, life signs aboard? Subspace life signs, you mean? Subspace life signs. There are currently no subspace life forms available. Are there any life signs on the ship? The only life signs are contained within main engineering. Uh, computer, do a readout of the last log entries of the ship. Error. Main computer core corrupted. Unable to retrieve data. Wow, that's... 
quite a letdown. Computer, show uh, location of the main engineering, or main computer core. Uh, so it does show you on an MSD and a hollow display where the computer core is. And you realize very quickly why this is probably a problem. You remember those holes in the hull? Yeah, that's where the computer used to be. So there's no way for you to send the ship back where it came from. Computer, do you currently have access to the coaxial drive? Coaxial drive is operational. Would you be able to remote activate the coaxial drive to return back to the destination timeline or time period of the ship? Inquiry unknown. There is no time travel involved. How about just the coordinates of where the ship came from? Coordinates are error. So that's enough. Well, I'm happy. That kind of basically means it's airship now, right? Hmm. Temporal what time if... record says we still cannot keep it. Well, I mean, judging by the computer, it doesn't really contain any information that would Wait. pollute it. Huh. Um, I've got an idea. Those are dangerous words coming out of a Klingon. <sighs> I promise it doesn't involve me hitting a furring. Darn, I hope not. I just fixed the damn ship for you. I know. That's why I said it the way I did. Uh, I'll tap my comm badge. Commander Gortag to Lieutenant Thomas. This is Lieutenant Thomas, sir. Go ahead. Have you gotten power back up on that, uh, on that station? Uh, no, sir. As I said, uh, it's telling us that apparently we have to go to the other side to restore power. We still don't know what that means, and again, okay. it's running on emergency. Lieutenant Thomas, the desk that you're, the console you're standing at right now, go to the other side of it and see if there's a switch. Uh, we, we've tried that, sir. Uh, no, nothing there. Uh, what about the other side of the station? Uh, we do have Mirthrin's team in that area. Uh, Mirthrin hasn't told, or the captain hasn't told us that he's found anything. Okay. Then, do you have computer access to it, or is the power completely out and you have no access? We have rudimentary data access, but we are unable to tap into the data repository. Um, long shot. Does it happen to say where it pulled this ship from? Uh, one moment, sir. We can certainly try and pull that information. Uh, well, uh, we probably should have looked at this earlier, sir. Uh, you know of the Mirror Universe, yes? Well, good news, sir. It's not from that Mirror Universe. It's from a different one. There's one of them, one? In, in, anybody in, in engineering, Gortek just starts rubbing his forehead. Oh, um, uh, okay, Lieutenant. Uh, do you have coordinates and like things so we can send this ship back uh i do have a set of calculations here which i don't entirely understand sir but conceivably if we fed it back into a portal system we could send it back yes we don't really have enough power to do that though i mean the wormhole station's out of juice do you think that this super engine can do it break universal laws and pass into another one? I don't know. I mean, a, co a coaxial drive can do a lot, but I don't know if it can do that much. I mean, you're only a huge, you know, it, it technically, I mean, you are folding the fabric of space, but only in order to move across known a space that within this boundary, this universal boundary. So you're saying you can't do it? I'm saying maybe the drive can't even do it. Perhaps. Is, if is it I may. something we could try? Perhaps if we didn't open a wormhole specifically, but opened a small tear 
using what little rem power remains in the uh, wormhole station, and which we can then ex use this drive to expand the tear. You yeah. ever seen when it happens to a ship when it hits uh, something like a wall at warp? Yes. I mean, I mean, it's, you're still the ship is still the same size. You're not shrinking the ship to go through the tear. And to be very clear on this, zero portals are able to be generated right now. It does not matter the size of the portal; can't generate it. Honestly, Commander, this is a, this is a really good thing for us because technically, since this is from a different mirror universe, it's not an air timeline that's being polluted. So, technical uh, here. It did it, the did this come from a parallel universe's present, or did it come from a parallel universe's future? Ugh, my head hurts. There's no guarantee that the universe would have advanced at the same rate as our universe. It's very possible that the timeline is farther ahead in the alternate universe. So their present is our this, future. The station is also saying other side. What if it means the other side where this ship came from? That would be... I mean, obviously they have the ability to open up wormholes to other universes, but I can't imagine what they would be doing there to draw power. I mean, why not just open a wormhole inside of a sun within the, the system itself and draw power that way? I mean, it'd be cheaper. Suffice to say, Captain, we've got a brand new ship here. And uh, wh whatever you want to do with it, we could blast it to bits, we could dismantle it, we could junk it, we could salvage parts from it. Whatever you want to do here, but uh, it's here. And I don't really think we have a way of getting it back. <sighs> so we have another ship. And probably not any crew, especially one of this size, to man it. Or to deal with it, really. Wonderful. Alright, well, let's... Let's bring it, a, bring it alongside the Amaltia. And make a decision on what we're going to do with it. All right. I think I can get it to do that. Um, if we need to use the tractors from the Amalthea, we can. Though, I think this will be one of the biggest... No, no. That that planetoid was bigger. No, it's a, it's wind pulse engines are, are operational. Don't worry. Alright, uh, we'll bring it alongside and... Uh, do me a massive favor and power down all the weapons just to make sure somebody doesn't hit the wrong button. Why? Are there any Romulans left? No, but there are Klingons left. Oh, I, well, damn. I, didn't I always really forget like about those Klingons. Uh, I haven't. I still want to kill the captain. That would explain why, I, why we haven't seen him for the last month. Yeah. All right, computer, uh, bring us to Mark, heading Mark 3, 6, Alpha 2, uh, one quarter impulse. Working. In addition, during your conversation, I ran an inventory check. There are craft available which can return to original destination. Son of a... <sighs> so, if we form an away mission and go to that other side, they might be able to help us. Uh, that's Which is what breaking it's so like. many different protocols and directives. I find they just get in the way, really. But, you know, that's just personal. personal I mean, taste. Chief, Chief, you are the one that, that was trying to teach me that protocols are just merely guidelines, correct? Uh, only when you can bend them to your advantage. Alright, you know? well... Let's bring this thing alongside the Amalthea. We'll get <clears throat> we'll get Mirthrin and the other captains involved, um, and people above our pay grade can make the decision. All right. Sounds like a plan, and of course, uh, I think that's probably going to be a good way to start the next session. So let's stop there. 
so anyone watching on Twitch or YouTube, etc., etc., thank you so much for watching, and we'll see these guys next week. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.